everyone and welcome back if you are new thanks so much for stopping by the farmhouse today I have a huge project I'm gonna get started on I am so super excited I can't even tell you this project has been on the radar for months and I've just not been able to slip it in but as we are getting closer to spring in about a month I am gonna be outside 24 7 so I have to get this project done and I have to get it done now and it is a big project it's like two projects put together so we're gonna get started I'm staying in the kitchen for a reason this is where the project is going to take place we are first gonna talk about the walls when we moved in here the walls were painted this kind of country creamy off-white color and um, we are very fortunate this was a bank owned property when we moved in and usually you when you get a bank owned property you could walk into just whatever and it's usually a mess and a disaster we were so fortunate because the bank had come in and they had cleaned everything and they had done all new carpeting all new wall paint and linoleum in the bathroom and the kitchen it was all very bland but that was okay because we had bigger things we had to concentrate on that were far more important at that time so it could wait we were blessed that way we could just move in and live here and that was great the um the linoleum was kind of a creamy yellow color it's actually in the chicken coop now and i will try to get a picture of that in here and it had these really deep ridges now this is a farm i'm a farm girl i'm outside gardening i have chickens we have dogs we have grandkids and the kitchen door is the door we use so you could just imagine it's it's high traffic to snacks it's high traffic to the bathroom and when that dirt would get into those crevices oh my gosh so hard to get out and i'm a massage therapist and you're not supposed to have fingernails and here I am with all these little tools trying to get down there and clean all that crud out of the crevices and it just wasn't working for me and found this linoleum at Menard so we had to get a sheet of vinyl because we had some issues where we had to uh, jack the floor in the kitchen and as the floor would move over time we knew that anything that we put down rather it be wood or uh, some kind of tile that it would shift and move and it wouldn't work it would be broken and coming unglued and that wasn't an option so found this at a huge sale we ended up paying like 79 foot or 79 cents for a foot and it had a 20-year warranty and I'm like if it lasts the five years that we need it to i'm totally happy and it's been three years guys this floor is in tip-top shape i love it um and yeah, I'm in absolutely no hurry to change it. When I rolled out the floor against the kitchen cabinets, I knew for sure they had to be changed. Now they were just your standard oak cabinets, um, builder grade when we moved in here. And I did this technique that you see behind us. When I rolled out the floor, I wanted it all coherent and mashed, and it did, and it's beautiful. It really is, but it's also very dark in this kitchen now i have on the ceiling fan with five leds i have bright leds in the stove it is a sunny day and there is a bright light behind the camera so it looks bright in here but when you are in here working it is totally not if i were to turn off all the lights um you would see just how dark it is and maybe i'll, I'll insert that and so when you're trying to read a recipe or you're trying to uh, look at ingredients and you're cooking you know your back is actually turned and you're not getting this light in fact it's creating a shadow so it just really needs to be brightened up so today we are going to take on painting the walls and we are going to take on redoing these kitchen cabinets now everyone loved the kitchen cabinets and i feel really bad because so many people were in love with them um but we just need it to be brighter and this was the look that i was going for when we first looked at the house so we'll see how it all comes together right now i'll give you a uh a good look around the kitchen before we get started to point out some of the things that I'm going to work on and some of the things that I'm not going to fix right now um, and explain why and then uh, we're gonna get into prepping and prepping friends if you take nothing else from this video 
prepping is just the most important thing that you can do. It is more important than even the paint that you choose. So before you paint, you seriously have to put a lot of work into prepping. So I hope this helps you do that. Let's get in and get started, guys. Well, here is what our kitchen looked like the very first time we stepped foot in it. Uh, this is the before before and that's what that linoleum used to look like. Here is a shot of the kitchen as you first walk in the back door. This is what you see first and then we're going to show you just around the kitchen and talk about a few things. Uh, this is a shot of the side of the kitchen that has everything on it. So this would be categorized, I would say, as a galley kitchen where everything is kind of all along one side. Now, I have done some updates. We did replace this window. Um, that was one thing that changed in addition to the countertops and the um, cabinets. See, I did put up this crown molding after I lowered those cabinets by four inches. They were really tall and I couldn't reach the top shelf. And so we lowered those down and added that crown molding and that just gives it more of that farmhouse look. So I really like that. Now this is something I'm going to have to patch when we replaced the countertop. They had never filled that in so we had to do that. Now you see here the trim is missing from the side of the door and we thought that was pretty odd too until we realized you cannot open the dishwasher uh, without it hitting the trim so uh, that's not getting fixed at the moment uh, because we are again making big changes to the kitchen later we just have to decide when we're going to do that this is the hallway into the downstairs bathroom which is also getting an update very soon and into our dining room and now we are back to the beginning of where we started our tour now i'm going to do what i always do when i am starting a project i'm going to clear my space i'm going to remove as much as i can from this kitchen I have gotten this tote to put all my decor items in so I know exactly where they will be when I'm done with the kitchen and then I can decide what I'm bringing back and what I'm not bringing back into the kitchen. And now I'm just going to move some of the bigger, heavier things out of the way. The baker's rack is actually going to go outside. It needs to be updated. I'm taking all the fabric down. Um, I really like these curtains. I don't know if I will use them going to put them in the washer right now and they'll be ready when we're done and we'll see if I want to use them again. Now here is one of my things that I really love to do. I love to be organized with a project. I've told you that before. I gather as much of the things that I think I will use prior to starting. And then here is a pro tip for you. I get a lot of the black bags ready and I label them. These are the plates for the electrical outlets. I have one for kitchen knobs and drawer pulls. And then I always, whatever room I'm in, I just put the room and then import it because you don't know what you're going to find and you're holding it in your hand. You don't know what to do with it. I put it in the bag and then if it's important, I bring it back. I'm removing all of the things around the kitchen, the face plates to the electrical outlets, anything that is hanging up and any nails or screws of course are going to come out now so that there are none of them in the way when I'm going to paint and now I'm going to dust the walls just using my Swiffer duster getting a lot of the dust off and I'm also removing the baseboards this is a great tip if you are painting the wall a different color than the baseboard or if you're doing a dark wall and white trim this allows you to come down the wall with the paint and then you could paint the baseboard separately before you put it back on and it saves a whole lot of time and tedious cutting in and trimming i'm not the it's not my favorite part now i'm just showing you the tools that i'm using to wash the walls i'm just going to use a cloth but i also have on hand a magic eraser in case there is marker or something on the wall i can't get off i have a scrubby in case there's food stuck or anything like that, you really, really want to get in there and wash the walls really, really well because you don't know what's going to be on the wall. And this is one of those areas, too, that wasn't prepped well and the paint peeled. 
especially around the stove. Now I'm taking my scraper and when you take the screws out, sometimes some of the drywall paper comes with it and it leaves a little bump. So I'm getting them and then I'm just going through the entire kitchen and looking for any kind of bumps on the wall where maybe there was something on the, the roller before or a drip before. If you paint over those now, you will see them in your paint job. So now is the time to get rid of them. Now this is the one area that I had said how the paint had flaked and they had not prepared the surface really well and I was shocked at just how much paint just kept coming off but it was so good that you do this because if you don't and you put wet paint on that it's going to make it continue to pull off the wall and make even a bigger mess later so you really want to take that prep time now. And of course, most importantly, when you do something like this, you have to go back and clean it up right away. At least I feel you do because you don't want to track this through your house, number one. And number two, you don't want these little flakes uh, blowing around and getting in your paint or on your paint. And it's just so much easier to keep your workspace clean uh, as you go. It, it, then you're not constantly having this big mess. So now I'm going to go ahead and spackle all of my holes and fill them in. And another great tip is when you put the plaster on, take a couple minutes. So this is in fast motion, but I take a couple minutes with my spatula and I go ahead and scrape off as much as I can because when this dries, you can leave your little spatula marks or where there was too much. And even though you sand it, sometimes those ridges still remain. And that will show through your paint. So as you can see here, I'm really taking the time to feather this out and try to leave no marks. Now I'm ready to paint the ceiling. This ceiling really needed painted. In the country, there's lots of dust and bugs and everything. And the ceiling paint in this room was flat. So everything that got stuck to the ceiling, uh, you know, sometimes think, cooking stuff and whatever just gets stuck to the ceiling. And you cannot scrub flat paint. So I went with semi-gloss. Now it's the end of the evening, guys. Return to neutral. That is a great tip. I'm taking the time to clean up and putting everything back in its place so that when I get up in the morning and I have to come into this workspace and actually, you know, make tea or coffee or some food, it is nice and clean and I'm not walking in and witnessing like a bomb blew up and then you have to try to find your way around the kitchen. So it's all clean and we're ready to go. Now over before I went to bed, I did go ahead and put some test samples out for paint and I'm so glad I did because the middle one, as you can see uh, behind me, was the paint I had chose. It actually shows up really gray in this room, and so I did not go with it. But I am taking my sander and sanding everything that I have patched and everywhere that there's spackle. And now to remove the sanding dust, I have again another uh, Swiffer, and I'm just going through and from working from the top down, getting all the dust. Now, I said I was taking the baker's rack outside, it was kind of brown and kind of chippy, and it's been around for a long time. And I really wanted to update it, so just a can of black spray paint, and I went over it. And here is another tip we're going to get started painting. But if you take a nail and puncture some holes into the rim of your can. And you can see kind of at the rim there where I'm showing the brush, the paint when it gets in the rim will drizzle down in there and it helps to relieve the problem of too much paint in the top. And you can see as you go around the edge, it just drips right in and now your lid is going to go back on and fit tight. That is one of my favorite painting tips. And now it's time to get started. I'm so excited to see this paint go on the wall. There is a lot of work for prepping, but as I said before, prepping is going to make your paint look great. So I am cutting in or doing the trim, however terminology you use for this. Um, I call it cutting in, but it's doing the trim work. And this is not my favorite. I have to be completely honest with you. This is long and tedious, but again, it is part of the process that makes the whole job look great. And here I want to show you um, when you go around your electrical outlets, take your time, make sure you 
wipe up any spills and feather it out really well so that you don't have to get the roller too close and roll over those outlets. It always looks bad when somebody paints over the electrical outlets. So take your time here, guys, and go with that prep and make sure that you don't get too close to those outlets. I'm rolling now and that is my favorite part because it goes so fast and you get such a fast result and you can see how great it's going to look. And um, I'm super excited with the color we chose. This was just a pre-mixed white. That's what I ended up going with. The color I was really hoping to get is um, like a glass of cold vitamin D milk and that's the color that I thought this was you can see again how I was very careful around the outlet and that's going to make a big difference for smaller spaces you can totally use a smaller roller to make it easier when you got to bend and get into a smaller space and it just helps when the area is not as wide as the roller as you can see there I wiped up spills I keep a wet cloth with me the entire time because I'm not perfect and it's just easier to wipe them spills up. You all know I will choose pure and organic cleaners every single time, but sometimes you have to call in the big guys. This is a product called Awesome. You may have heard of it. If you have in the comments, let me know. It is at the Dollar Tree for a dollar and it does great at degreasing because we wanted to paint our range hood and you can see we actually changed the color. Now this was the perfect time for us. The paint was dry in the kitchen and I wanted to change out our electrical sockets and plates to match the bright white that was in the room. So we took the time and went around the room and did this. Now I'm changing my attention to the cupboards, the second part of this project. Now because I had redone all the cupboards before and they were not glossy, I just wanted to take the sander and see how much of what I had done was going to come off. And nothing really did. So I went ahead and did a test spot. I painted it and then took the sander over it and nothing came off and so you want to make sure that you don't have a buildup on your cabinets of gloss because if you put fresh paint on that's going to chip right off so then i proceeded to scrub everything with awesome around the stove to make sure there was no grease or oil or anything and then i got to work with my beginning to trim out the cabinets and because i had done so much work before i thought i would get away with go ahead and leaving the doors on. I thought they would be so much easier to paint if I could just leave the doors on. But as I got to work on them, I realized, no, there was just too much hardware in the way and I wanted a great looking professional job. So I had to take all the doors off. And one by one, I did that. I took all the doors off. And as you can see, I did not empty the cupboards and we'll talk about that more as we go. But the doors came off and I set them up for an assembly line and that was so much easier. And then I got out my roller and I proceeded to roll the bigger spaces. And uh, I didn't want a lot of brush marks. And you can see throughout this video, I alternate back and forth. And that does help alleviate uh, too many marks on your cabinets. So I rolled and brushed and then rolled again. And that made the perfect finish for my cabinet. So once they were all trimmed out and painted, I did the bottom half as well. I got those all trimmed out and then I went ahead and started my assembly line of doing the doors one right after another. And I did use the brush here because around the doors uh, there was a lot of trim work and then of course uh, I don't know if I mentioned when I redid the cupboards the first time I used scrubbable paintable wallpaper in the inserts so it looks like beadboard but it's just wallpaper and it has held up so amazing I've loved the look that it has given really given that farmhouse look without a lot of work involved and um, I just want to let you know that on the floor, each cupboard got two coats. 
Now, for the knobs, some of the knobs, not the drawer pulls, but the knobs were flaking in paint. And I really wanted to keep them all, so I just went over them with some oil rubbed bronze spray paint. And then they all looked uniform again. Now I'm ready to paint the door, and I thought I really wanted an all-white kitchen. I wanted the white door because, like I said, it's really dark and the sun coming in, and that would be beautiful. But then I thought about what I was talking about in the intro about how, yeah, I'm a farm girl, and my hands are dirty, and I'm running through the door, and that door has to be scrubbed a lot, and I would just be scrubbing off a lot of white paint, I think. So I went ahead... This is Valspar Cracked Pepper, and it's all on all the doors so far in the, in the lower portion of our house. And I really like it. I like the depth. I like the color. So went with that on the back door on the inside, and now I'm ready to put the cover back together. Now, don't fret. I said I would mention this earlier. While all the paint was drying, and it is my spring cleaning time, I did go ahead and take everything out, clean it, and put everything back in the cupboards. So don't worry, there's no sanding dust on the dishes or anything like that. It just coincided with spring, so I did it. Now this is a little DIY I'm doing. My friend gave me this. It was her old medicine cabinet. I thought it had a farmhouse look, and I did this, and now I'm putting everything back. Um, and now it's the next morning, and... I have brought back my decor and I'm deciding what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to put where. And with the kitchen being all fresh and bright, I decided there were a lot of things that I didn't feel I wanted to bring it back in right now. I wanted to keep it clean and simple. So I just brought in a few things and I really liked how it came together, you know, especially when it was that time to transition to spring as well. So here it is. I um, am just finishing up putting some decor back where it belongs. Here is the finished product, guys. I think I am just so happy, and I think you would like it too. Please let me know down in the comments what you think of the finished kitchen. I am just really happy. Um, I like the decor that I brought back, and I like how bright and sunny the kitchen is. Everything looks so new. The kitchen looks completely different. It doesn't even look like it, it's part of our house anymore. It just looks so big and sunny, and I'm just so happy. And I was able to fix a lot of the things that were bothering me, but some of those things are waiting for the next thing, and we will definitely have to share that with you and bring you along. The door does look great. I did keep the curtains. There's my little project. I used an old medicine cabinet for a command center, and I really like it. I had those shelves We're there before. Finished, and I'm pretty smitten with this kitchen, friends. I am in love with it. I am so happy I went ahead and did this, and I'm also happy I got it crossed off the list before spring because spring is a super busy time around here. And I'm so glad you came along. I really hope that you were motivated and inspired to be able to take on your next DI project. Comment down below if this inspired you and what your next project is. I would love to see them. And if you don't follow me over on Instagram, it is just Bloomwell Home and Garden. Look me up there and go ahead and tag me. I would love to see your projects finished and what you have going on. I really enjoy uh, inspiring other people, so I hope you have been inspired. Until next time, friends, be blessed, be safe, and I'll see you soon.